Investments imply putting aside your savings into equity, mutual funds, real estate, commodities or business with an intention of capital appreciation, that is wealth accumulation, over a preset tenure, short, mid or long, which is based on individual preferences. Investments are great tools for growing and accumulating your money. However, it is important to keep some basic things in mind before making investments, given that it is not possible for someone else to define your goals and choose an apt option for you. We will give you key pointers which will help you in your investment judgment. Welcome to Business Insights and Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadonia. My guest is the CEO and co-founder of Ice Town Development and Investment, a fast-growing real estate development company with five estates to her name in Lagos. Hassan is a certified realtor estate entrepreneur from Metropolitan School of Business Management, UK, and an alumni of Lagos Business School. He was recently inducted a fellow by the Institute of Oil and Gas Research and Hydrocarbon Studies. Welcome, Dr. Hassan Ismail, to Business Insights. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes, in my intro, I just said uh, investment could be short, mid, or even long term. But then, before you get into an investment, you should be able to know what you want. But let's just start on a general level and ask this uh, pertinent question. How does investments work? Okay, thank you for that question. So, investment basically has to do with um, buying an asset or an item in order to make profit in the long run. So in other words, investment or in a layman term simply means buy an asset or an item at a lower price and selling at a higher price. So how that works basically is um, you look at the different asset class or investment vehicles available and um, you put in your money to work for you. All right. Uh, most times we hear about uh, due diligence and of course uh, we need to understand what it is and why it is important for investment decisions. Okay, so when trying to put your money in any venture, due diligence is very important. And due diligence is an intelligent investigation into that asset class or that investment scheme you wish to put your money in. So what do I mean by intelligence investigation? You just don't have to use your own knowledge or what you think you know in finding out if that investment scheme is right or not right for you. You need to consult the experts in that field to give you the SWOT analysis. That's um, the SWOT analysis in that uh, particular industry so that you don't make a mistake. Okay, let me just take it one step further. Before we talk about um, personal roadmap, uh, for instance, you talked about uh, hiring those who are very, very experienced in such um, uh, investment uh, you know, fields. So for instance, now, do I really need to do that for almost any investment that I need to make? For instance, I am a small business owner and I feel that um, I'm making some sort of um, profit and I don't want to, you know, plow it back into my business for now and I want to invest, uh, let's say, in some venture, who do I really need to go to that can advise me that I, uh, if I should go into the capital market, if I should go into mutual funds, or if I should just uh, invest in government bonds, really? Okay, so the kind of person you consult for due diligence or to get uh, uh, knowledge or information about uh, any type of investment depends on the investment class, investment uh, portfolio. So we have the um, we have the digital portfolio, which has to be deal with the Bitcoin, the cryptocurrencies. We have the um, the stock portfolio, which is the stock and equities and the likes, and we have the real portfolio. So, for instance, if you want to go into real investment you will have to consult people who are in the real estate field. You will need definitely a surveyor, a lawyer, and an experienced realtor. Now, I noticed from uh, experience, people going into real estate, they consider inspection of a property 
as due diligence. That is not uh, due diligence. Due diligence involves taking coordinates of that property and charting it to find out what does the government have for that location. So that's the beginning of due diligence. So basically, the choice of um, uh, the advisor depends on the uh, types of investment you are going into. All right, uh, moving on right now, some experts would say that there's a need to draw a personal uh, map or some sort of road map uh, before you get into investment um, you know, decisions. Uh, what does that really mean? Okay, so if you're looking at um, growing your wealth, you definitely have to have a road map. And this road map can be broken into five phases. Phase mm -hmm. one is the learning stage where you learn about that investment. Please don't put your money in any investment that um, you don't understand at least 70% of what that investment is all about. Some of us will just see something and because a friend said he has done this and is doing this, you just go into it with zero knowledge. Please don't put your money in anything that um, you don't really understand. So you have, it's divided into five phases. The learning stage where you need to know about that investment, the activation stage, huh? mm. that's where you start practicing. You start practicing uh, what you have learned. Then when you now see that, oh, your knowledge in that um, investment is growing, I'm going to expansion. You go into expansion and the last stage, uh, you go into um, accumulation and reinvestment. So it is very important to draw a financial uh, map when going into any investment. In fact, what that will also help you do is that you will know your exit strategy. Every investment has an exit strategy. Don't just go in, put some money there, and just keep waiting until one day you wake up and you see that there's nothing there. For instance, the recent thing that happened with uh, the crashes that happened with uh, one of the major crypto ex exchanges. Mm. So many of them are going to also go that way, but will not uh, mention him. A lot of them are also going to go um, into bankruptcy this year. You know, so you need to know um, uh, your exit strategy with a very good uh, uh, personal plan that you map out for that your investment. All right, let's still talk about this exit um, um, strategy before we move on to other questions right now. You know, so you are going into an investment uh, with a clear core tab. Uh, sense that uh, you are supposed to make uh, this particular uh, profit or yield in this particular time. So would you need to uh, fix um, an exit or like some sort of um, a way out when that particular time has not really reached? Or how does it really work? Okay, so how, how this work in, let's look at, for instance, in the financial markets. Before you place a trade, you have been asked, how much is the amount of money you want to risk? then how much is the amount of money you would like to make? So it means before even taking or placing a trade, you are automatically defining your risk and defining your reward. So the exit strategy is very, very important even before you go into the um, business. For instance, those who buy real estate, they know from the onset, that, okay, this property that I'm buying, this investment property that I'm buying, I'm going to hold it for the next 10 years. Because there is a map that has been drawn that in that 10 years, there is this amount of money I make and there is this amount of money I need. You know, So with this particular property class, if I put in my money in that 10 years time, it will grow to this money I'm looking for. Oh. I understand. Mm. So right from the beginning, you need to define your exit uh, plan. It's very important. All right. Uh, still talking about uh, financial outlay and financial outlook. Uh, do you also need to analyze your current financial situation before going into any investment? Because some people feel that uh, if they don't really have so much, they should not be thinking about investment or some sort of investment um, decision. While others might not really look at where they are at the moment, they think they might need to get some sort of maybe equity or borrow funds to also invest. How does this really work? Okay, so some people think that um, before you can go into an investment, you have um, 
a lot of money to go into such investment. But I have realized with time that um, one of the easiest ways to raise money for any investment is saving. We are in a country or in a part of the world where saving culture is not um, really practiced. But, you know, a lot of people, before the money comes in, is already spent, you know. So no matter the kind of income you are making or whatever the kind of business you are making, it is necessary and important that um, you have a little percentage, 10%, 15%, depending on your strengths, and you will be saving it. Now, saving is not actually an investment, but is a key to going into an investment. Now, when you save up that money, you can then go into an investment that can uh, that, that money can carry. For instance, you can start with stock. You can start with stock. If you like real estate, you can look at developing locations that have potential and put that money there. You have one million saved, two million naira saved. It's not safe until you remove it from your bank and put it into maybe land banking. Okay. With time. So your financial situation, yes, is very important. You know, you need to know where you are so that you can know how to get to where you want to go. And saving is one of the ways you can use uh, to, you know, uh, get money to go into investments. And there are other ways you can use OPM, other people's money, but it's, all, uh, it's always, always risky to go into businesses that you don't have proper knowledge for, as I said earlier, because if you are not informed, you will be deformed. All right, if you're not informed, you will be deformed. Uh, uh, in passing, you talked about investment in uh, the capital market. You talked about the stock exchange. You talked about, uh, you know, uh, equities. Uh, there was a time, I remember sometime in 2005, 2006, uh, the stock exchange in Nigeria was really in a boom. Uh, lots of people actually invested so much uh, in uh, you know, this uh, securities. Uh, but at the point, uh, it's as though it's, um, it lost uh, its value or, and um, the interest or the yields were not really coming in like before. And a lot of people, you know, are not even looking at uh, investing in the stock market as some sort of an investment. Would you really think it's advisable right now if you were to advise, you know, to invest in the capital market? This is a very hot question. It's like you are putting me on the hot seat to give a financial recommendation. So what I noticed with investment, any kind of investment, is that um, by the time it becomes news, then it is already late. That 2004, 2006, when the stock market boomed and it became news, a lot of people came in, put in their money, and um, lost it in the long run. So what happened is from uh, insider information, you know, there are some companies that if they want to list, for instance, at let's say 10 naira per share, they call in friends, close friends, do a private equity placement, and those ones can buy it, let's say, at 2 naira. Now, by the time it's listed officially, and it became news, some people have already made 8 naira per share. Mm -hmm. So if those investors decide to pull out their money, you know, in crypto they call it rock pool, rock pool. If they rock pool, then the investment go down. So I will not tell you that this is the right time to uh, put your money into stock or whatever investment. As I said earlier, you need to know or consult people who are in that field so that uh, you will be properly guided. But from my little experience, Real estate, if done wisely, if done real, mm. is a very good uh, investment vehicle. You're still watching Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. We'll take a quick break. We still have Dr. Ismail with us. Uh, when we return, we'll be looking at um, risk appetite and how you evaluate your comfort zone in a moment to join us again. Welcome back. It's still Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. We are looking at investment decisions, investment plans, and what you need to do before you actually make such investment. And our guest uh, is Dr. Hassan Ismail. Thanks for staying with us, Dr. Ismail. Before we went on that break, we we're talking about um, real estate, but we'll come to that in a moment. Let's talk about risk appetite. Some people would say from elementary economics, we hear that um, the higher the risk, the higher 
the yields or the returns, as it were. So how can you evaluate or measure the, your appetite for risk and um, how do you know where your comfort zone actually lies? So it is said that the younger you are, the more risk you should take because you have a lot of time to experiment and do a lot of things. But once you are from 31 and above, uh, you need to be cautious. That's why you notice that um, the elderly or um, the elderly people, they are more conservative about life. So if you tell them there's an investment that can give you up to 20% return on that um, investment, they are already like, no, I, I'm not going into that. So your age determines your appetite. The younger you are, the more likely you are, uh, the more likely it is for you to go into high uh, risk investments with a high reward. I remember sometimes ago, um, before the pandemic, well, a friend um, took me to somewhere in uh, in Lekki, and those guys, they said they are into Forex. A lot of us know them, and um, one of their person came, sweet-mounted, and told us we could make up to 30% of any money uh, we invested. I asked some questions and I realized that into the financial market speculation. In speculation, you cannot guarantee the actual return. Now, someone is here guaranteeing me a particular fixed return in speculation, you know. So I told my friend, me, I'm not interested, but he went and put in, I think, about five million naira. And as you know, the rest is history. But thank God he's still young. As I mean, as someone who is um, 60 or 70 years old, you know, he could run into uh, hypertension and uh, a lot of problems could happen to him. So your risk appetite is uh, basically dependent on how old you are. The younger you are, the more likely you are to take uh, uh, investments with high risk, high return. But on a general, in your portfolio, you should have a mixture of um, the high risk, the low risk, and medium risk. All right. Okay, fine. Let's move on right now and talk about um, distribution of um, investment. Uh, you, have spoke to, uh, you have spoken so widely and so uh, elaborate uh, when, when uh, we we'll talk about uh, real estate investment. Uh, but some people sort of would want to have like a basket of investment where they can have... Um, an array of um, various plants. So how do you consider the mix uh, where you should invest? Should I invest some in uh, real estate? Should I invest some in um, mutual uh, bonds? Or do I just invest in um, uh, low risk uh, government uh, securities? Just how do you consider the distribution of your investment? Okay, so as I said um, earlier, that um, there are basically three categories of um, investment uh, uh, vehicles. We have the portfolio um, portfolio investments. We have the digital investment and real investment. Portfolio investments have to do with the uh, stocks, equities, and bond. Now, in portfolio investments, there is also they they have different risk attached to them. Like the bond oh. is one of the um, investments that have the low risk in portfolio investment. Then the digital, there are also low risk digital assets that you can invest in. Then one of the uh, safest is the real investment, which has to do with uh, real assets like real estate, um, and commodities, gold, you know, um, precious metals. So in all of these three, you need to find a way to distribute your portfolio for both um, high risk, medium risk, and low risk. Now, from experience, real estate, when done well, is a low risk investment. With um, uh, uh, though it takes time to mature, but it's one of the low risk investment. Then government bonds and um, uh, equities also. Thank you. All right. So real estate. Let's talk about it for one uh, minute. Uh, a lot of people are talking about uh, uh, investing in. Um, landed properties or just buying um, houses outright and reselling over time. But uh, some people like a school of thought would believe that uh, you need so much before you can actually invest them in real estate. How true is that? 
Okay, so there's something called um, tokenization, which is uh, which is uh, which derives its word from um, uh, sachetization. Sachetization is uh, breaking big things into small things, just like the case study of when um, uh, Sachet Mick came into existence by Cowbell. So they discovered that a lot let's of not people... Mention, let's not mention brands. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay, okay. So um, tokenization is one of the strategies that uh, have been adopted into real estate. And tokenization came from sachetization. You know, you bring a big stuff, divide it into portions, so that people in the, uh, in the lower ending uh, stage and, you know, and have um, access to it. So that same process has been brought into uh, real estate where people can co-own or, or co-invest in properties. So for instance, a plot of land going for say 10 million naira, the developer can decide to partition it for four people, five people or six people. So for five people, all you need to bring is two million naira and you co-own that property. Same also happen for houses. You can buy a house worth 100 million naira for the purpose of generating rental income. So if 10 of you contributed money equally to buy that property, you can be earning, you know, return your rental income from that property based on your contribution um, and that uh, um, for that property. You can set up an SPV, a special purpose vehicle, to manage that transaction so that your equity in that SPV will determine the uh, amount of money or the interest or the amount of rental income you get from that property. So also in real estate, we are seeing a lot of um, tokenization, sachetization by aspect of co-ownership uh, in these investments. All right, uh, fine. Uh, a school of thought says that one should be careful uh, of investing heavily in shares of uh, their employers or individual stock. Is that true? That is very true. How so? Explain it to us. Break it down. Break I'll it down give an me. example. You know, there yeah. are some financial houses. Well, you can borrow money from a financial house and say you want to use that money to buy the shares of that financial house. Yeah. It's because of this reason, because they believe, you know, an individual or whatever should not invest heavily in a stock. In fact, if you invest heavily in a particular stock, it's like you are putting your eggs in one basket. So portfolio diversification is very, very important. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. As I said earlier, you should have a mix of high yield, medium yield, and um, low um, yield investments. All right, as we begin to wrap up right now, would you say there is um, a specific time, a good time, or a right time to actually invest? Yes, there is a good time. There is a specific time that you are supposed to invest, and that was 20 years ago. And the next best time is now. So you look at your current financial situation and uh, look at strategies or the entry points you can use to start investing. In fact, you can start investing with as little as 50,000 Naira, depending on um, the asset class you want to go into. And um, that, can, that can be true using some apps that can automate your savings so that when the saving grows to a particular amount of money, you can move that money into an investment. See, you don't have to have all the whole money in the world to start investment because if you cannot save one Naira out of your 10 Naira today, if you have 10 billion Naira tomorrow, it will also be difficult. So what this will do for you is that you are developing investment culture or investment mentality which is also going to help you in the long run. Thank you so much, Dr. Ismail, for all of the input and, of course, of the insights that you have given on today's edition of the show. We do appreciate it. Thank you for having me. 
All right, and that's the size of the show for today. We urge you to make the investment now. Don't wait uh, till you have so much. You can actually start small. But remember, there is low risk, medium risk, and high risk. All these measure your risk before you actually invest. Thank you so much for being a part of the show. I am Justin Akadonye. Business Insight returns to your screens again same time next week. Bye for now.